chapter number five. I think before I move on farther into the chapter to close out the chapter, um, I, I think I want to spend a little time on this business of verse 21, where he says, um, if you start midway through the verse, says, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I want to spend a little bit more time on two things. First of all, the inheritance there, and then secondly, the kingdom of God. Now, I'm not going to teach on the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Um, the two of those things are not the same. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are uh, two separate things. Um, but, I, so I, but I'm not going to teach the differences... I just want to give you some things about the kingdom of God and some things about the inheritance in connection to the kingdom of God. Um, one of the first things I did after we were together last week and studying for tonight was look up how many times the word inheritance shows up in the Bible. Uh, I'm sorry, in the New Testament. How many times the word inheritance shows up in the New Testament? Now, without counting, without counting, do you know how many times... Um, or how many manifestation of the works of the flesh are here? I mentioned it last week. Uh, how many How many works of the flesh are manifested? How many? 18. 18. Good job. Um, yeah. That's right. 18 times uh, or 18 different manifestations of the works of the flesh are listed here. 17 by name. And then the 18th is where it says, uh, and such like, and right. such like. That's the 18th. And there's a lot of things that fall under that. So, how many times do you think the word inheritance shows up in the New Testament? 18. 18 times. All right. That's right. So, the word inheritance shows up 18 times in the New Testament, and it's found here in the same verse where 18 works of the flesh are mentioned, or, you know, as far as how they can be manifested. And I don't think that's a coincidence at all. No, isn't it? And so, you have this business here where he says, they that do such things shall not inherit uh, the kingdom of God. Now, when it comes to inheritances, uh, there are two types. There are two types of inheritances. One is a guaranteed inheritance, and the second is an earned inheritance. One is guaranteed, and the second is earned. I first want to look at this business of the guaranteed inheritance. Look at Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians 1. <laughs> Ephesians 1. So when it comes to the Christian's inheritance, there are two types. There are There's the guaranteed and then there's the earned. Here in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11, we'll start with the guaranteed one. In whom also we have t obtained an inheritance. So that's what we're talking about. 18 times that word shows up. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance. There's the word again. Uh, until the re redemption of the precious possession, unto the praise of his glory. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, make mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So there are three times that word inheritance shows up. Three out of the 18 times it shows up right here in Ephesians chapter 1. And this is the guaranteed inheritance. Uh, what's guaranteed is that business there of how we were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Part, part of your inheritance that is, that is guaranteed and not earned is that you have inherited the Holy Spirit. You have inherited the Holy Spirit. Amen. He was given to you. Uh, it was something that was guaranteed to you. As a, you couldn't earn the Holy Spirit. Yeah, amen. Because the Holy Spirit comes with your salvation. You can't earn your salvation. So as part of your inheritance, the guaranteed one, you have the Holy Spirit. 
And as part of having the Holy Spirit, verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of his glory. As part of your earned, or I'm sorry, as part of your uh, guaranteed inheritance, you are guaranteed to go to heaven. Amen. So these are a couple of things that are guaranteed to you by way of salvation. You're guaranteed the Holy Spirit, and you're guaranteed that when you die, you're going to heaven. Or unless you don't die, the rapture happens, you have, as part of your inheritance, you are guaranteed a home in heaven by way of the rapture. So these are two, they're, you know, they're two of the same, I guess you could say. It comes with the territory, it comes with the Holy Spirit, that when you die, you will go to heaven. That is a guarantee. That's not something you have to uh, work at. You don't have to work to keep the Holy Spirit. You don't have to do anything to earn the Holy Spirit or to earn your way into heaven, to get saved or to stay saved. It's something that comes as part of your salvation. Look at Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Look at verse 12. We're not going to look at all 18, you know, but this is just a couple of them. <clears throat> Colossians 1 verse 12 is giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet, that means fitted, fitting, fit, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. So, going to heaven, being put into the kingdom of God, is your inheritance. That's, that's what you were given the day you got saved. You were translated. You were put into the kingdom of God. Um, we are partakers of the inheritance. So, all the things that come um, as a guarantee, as part of your salvation, all the saints have it. So, anything that, it, that goes with the territory of going to heaven... You have it. Uh, that is, if going to heaven means you uh, have eternal life, you have it. That's your inheritance. If going to heaven means you have a glorified body, guess what? You have it. If uh, if going if going to heaven is part of your salvation, that's part a part of that is your inheritance, and part of the inheritance is to live forever and ever and ever. Then guess what? That is what you're going to do. Those things come with your salvation. It is part of your inheritance. To go to heaven, to walk on a street of gold, uh, to spend time in whatever mansions are. I don't think there are houses up there, but whatever a mansion is in heaven, and don't fool yourself. You're not getting a house to move into so you can kick back on the hammock. I, I don't know what a mansion is, but it's not what you're thinking it is, okay? The world calls Beverly Hills mansions. You're not moving into a mansion. I hate to spoil the songs. I've got a mansion that's over the hilltop. Okay, I get the sentiment, but we're not moving into a mansion to sleep on, you know, king size and extra king size beds. Yeah. Whatever mansions are, it's not a house, so you can go live in and live out your days in a house, yeah. watching, you know, your sports and eating your Cheetos. That's not <laughs> what a mansion is. But whatever a mansion is, whatever it is, yeah. that comes with the territory. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, if it were not so, I would have told you. Right. It comes with it. Um, spending, coming back on white horses with the Lord Jesus Christ. That is part of the inheritance of the saints in light. All saints of God have that as part of their inheritance. It just comes with the territory. These are guaranteed things that you didn't probably know you were getting these things when you got saved, yeah. but you got the Holy Spirit. Yeah, amen. You got eternal life. Uh, you got a home in heaven. You have... Uh, you'll have glorified bodies. You'll live forever and ever. You're going to come back with him at the second advent. Uh, and, and there are other things that I guess you can, you know, lump into all that. Those are guarantees to the Christian. Every saint of God, every born again child of God has that as part of their inheritance. It's a guarantee. You don't have to do anything after you're saved to get those things. Okay? Does that make sense? Yes. When it comes to being translated into the kingdom of God and having an inheritance in the kingdom of God, some of those things are just flat out going to happen regardless of how you live after you're saved. Okay? Nothing you do in the flesh after you're saved will remove some of these guarantees. Now, the second inheritance within the kingdom of God 
uh, the second type is not a guarantee, but it's an earned one. Right. Okay? Yep. And that's the trickier one. That's the harder one. Yeah. And what he's dealing with here in Galatians is not the guaranteed inheritance. Okay? In Galatians there, he says, if you do these things, you're not going to have an inheritance in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. So obviously, whatever Paul is talking about there in Galatians 5, in connection to the works of the flesh, that's not the guaranteed inheritance. Right. Does that make sense? Yep. Mm -hmm. Whatever the inheritance is in the kingdom of God in Galatians chapter 5, verse 21, that can't be a guarantee. Mm -hmm. So it has to be different than a glorified body, than a home in heaven, than street of gold and mansions over the hilltop. Whatever he's talking about there that you will not get if you act out these works of the flesh, then it has to be something that is connected to an earned inheritance, not a guaranteed inheritance, okay? And you don't earn anything when it comes to salvation, but after salvation... There are some things that we are responsible for that we are responsible to earn and we can lose. All right, so look at Acts chapter 20. I know it's Wednesday night. You've already had a long week and I know you're tired and all of that, blah, blah, blah. But that's not an excuse not to get this because someone's going to hit you up with well, look, I have to keep my salvation. Yeah. Or if I commit these sins, if you commit these sins, you're not saved. Uh -huh. That's yeah. not true. And that's where your Pharisaical Baptists come in. Yeah. That's where, you know, your your Calvinists come in. And now all that kind of, they will, they will hit these passages and you're going to stand there like a deer in headlights, have no idea how to answer them. Yeah. And our responsibility is to know how to answer that's every right. man that asketh us the reason hope that lies within us. So it's our responsibility to know that there is a guaranteed inheritance that comes with my salvation. Right. Amen. But there's a thing there that looks like I can lose an inheritance. So I'm going to say, well, then that's not the same thing as a guaranteed inheritance. Right. It's something different than my salvation. Right. What is it? Well, I don't know. Let's find out. Acts chapter 20. Look at verse 32. Acts 20, 32. And now, brethren, I commend you. That means I commit you. I entrust you. I'm giving you over unto God. And to the word of his grace. Those are two things we need. We need to be commended to God, right? For his favor, for his glory, for his honor, for his workmanship, all right? For his pleasure. But we also need to be commended to the word of his grace. That's the scriptures. It's our responsibility to get a Bible, read a Bible, study the Bible, believe what it says. Mm -hmm. Why? Why are, we be, why are we to be commended to God and to the word of his grace? Which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Now, this is not a guarantee. <laughs> See? Right. This can't be a guaranteed inheritance. How do I know that? Well, who's he talking to? Thank you. Yeah. He's talking to brethren. Who are the brethren? Saved. These are saved people. Right. So saved people aren't worried about me being commended to God and to the word of his grace so I can have an inheritance. I've already got that. Right. Yeah. So I, I, there's, there's an inheritance that I don't need you to build me up. Yeah. I don't need the word of his grace to have a home in heaven. Right. I've already got that. I don't need to be sanctified in the eyes of the brethren, in the eyes of the local church, or in the eyes of God as far as my walk's concerned in order for me to have an inheritance that's guaranteed. I get in heaven regardless of how I live after I'm saved. Right. Well, yeah, but you should live a certain way. I don't disagree you should live a certain way. And I think if you don't live a certain way after you're saved, it can give you pause to consider whether or not you ever got saved. I, I get, I'll give you all of that. Right. But all I'm saying is you can be saved and do zip. Zilch, not a bump kiss for God, and still go to heaven. Amen. That's an inheritance. Amen. You get that regardless. So Paul's saying something else then. He's saying, brethren, I'm going to give you over to God. I'm going to entrust you. I'm going to I'm going to commit you to God. This you're, you're God's. I, I can't do I can't do anything more for you if God can't do it. Yeah, if God can't change your mind, I certainly can't change it. Yeah, right. Well, how's God going to change my mind, preacher? With the word of his grace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I want you to change my mind. I can't change your mind. Yeah. I can give you the Bible. Yeah. And I can be gracious with you out of the Bible. I can teach it and preach it. And we can rightly divide it and study it together. 
But unless God changes your opinion, your mind, ain't nobody going to help you. Why do I need my mind changed? Why do I need God? Because you need to be built up. What do I need to have built up? What? Do you, what? I don't know. What do you need built up? Faith? Yeah. Courage? Yeah. Commitment? Sure. Trust? Love? Amen. Doctrine? Yep. Strength? I don't. But there's obviously some things that Christians need God for. Yeah. Amen. And there's some things that Christians need the Bible for. Yeah. And they need the God of the Bible to do something in them yeah. in order to get them up to a place where they can get something more than just going to heaven. Yeah, and a lot of Christians are just happy going to heaven. We should be. I, I am happy too. Yeah. I'm going, I'm thankful. I like I got a mansion over the hilltop. That tells me I'm going someplace yeah, after yeah. I'm done. Yeah. But there's more to this life than just going to heaven. Yeah. There's more than just street of gold and angels playing harps. If they even do that, I don't know. But there's more to all of this life than just that. Yeah. And the job of the Christian is to find out what does God want me to know? How does God want me to live? What does God want me to think? How does God want me to behave? How does God want me to live my life after salvation through his word so I can have something more than just a continual knowledge of eternal security? Like 1 John 5, 12 is great, right? Beloved, uh, what does he say there? He says, uh, these things are written to you that you may know that you have eternal life. Okay, great, I know it already. Yeah. And unless I'm afraid of losing it, I, I can't know it any more than I already know I'm going to heaven. Right. Some don't know it, and they need that built up. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if you already know you're going to heaven, what do we need church for if that's all we need to know? Right. Yeah. There has to be something more than just the knowledge and the security of going to heaven. What? How does God want me to live until I get there? Right. Amen. What does God want me to think and believe about Him yeah. and the Bible until I get there? Yeah. That's what matters. Yeah. And so He says He's able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all that what are what that are what sanctified. Oh, brother, this is where the rubber meets the road. In other words, this just don't come to every brother. Right. It just don't come to every church member. Right. Not just everybody. Now listen, I know we're all sanctified in Christ. Yes. Right? Right. Doctorally speaking, yes. our, our position, our standing in Christ is that we are sanctified. Amen. Right? Do we all get that? Yes. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 1. He's made unto us wisdom, righteousness, and sanctification. Right. So I know that I am sanctified. My soul is sanctified in Christ. Right. It's been set apart. That's what sanctified means. It has right. two meanings. Wash and, and set apart. Okay? Mm -hmm. So my soul has been washed in the blood. Amen. Is that right? Yes. Because it's been washed in the blood, what's happened? Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, he cut our soul away from the body. So my soul is set apart because it's been washed by the blood. That it's set apart. Yes. So guess what? It's going to heaven. Amen. That's the guaranteed inheritance. But wait a second, I got three parts to me. Yeah. I've got soul guaranteed inheritance. Mm -hmm. But then I got the spirit and the flesh. And the flesh will never do anything sanctified and holy unless the spirit has control mm -hmm. and tells the flesh, this is what you're going to do today. Mm -hmm. You're going to read your Bible today. You're going to pray today. You're going to go to church tonight. You're going to sing hymns tonight. You're going to give praise tonight. You're going to worship tonight. You're going to believe this doctrine because it is good doctrine. And you're going to reject bad doctrine because it's bad doctrine. That's the spirit. And when we follow the spirit leading and guiding for our life, directed by the Holy Spirit, it makes the flesh do things it don't want to do. That's where sanctification comes in. Sanctification comes in by the flesh not having its with its way and the spirit having its way as long as it's directed by the Holy Spirit. Okay. That's sanctification. What is it? It's living a life that is set apart from the world, the flesh, because the flesh will have control of it, and the devil. So what do I need for that? I need to be what? I need to be washed. Yes. If I'm going to be sanctified, I have to be washed. If I'm going to be set apart for God's using, I have to be washed. Well, how do we get washed? 
How do we get how do we get sanctified so we can have an inheritance? How do we get washed? Well, go over to 2 Corinthians real quick. 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. 7, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. He said there that we 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 need to be sanctified so we can have an inheritance. We need to be built up. We need to be commended to God, commended to the Word of God, so we can be built up. Why? So we can be sanctified. Why? So I can have an inheritance. So I can earn something. Right. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, what promises? Look back at verse uh, uh, 17 of chapter 6. Look at verse six, chapter 6, verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye what? Separate. There's your sanctification. That's the world. Wherefore, come out from among them, the world. How do I know it's the world? All I got to do is back up a little bit. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? That's the world. Yeah. That's the unsaved. That's the ungodly. That's the religions of this world. Yeah. Come out from among them, beasts. Uh, what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. What's the temple of the living God? The flesh, the body. God lives inside this body. So I have to make sure this body is being used for God's glory. But this body will never do anything for God's glory. Right. It can't. Right. The flesh cannot please God. Right. That's what Romans chapter 8 says. The flesh cannot please God. Right. So how in the world am I supposed to use this body as a living sacrifice, sanctified holy for his use, if it can never do it? The spirit yeah. has to make us do right. it. So what, has, what does the spirit need? It needs to be sanctified. It needs to be washed. It itself needs to be set apart from what the flesh wants to do. It needs to be in control of the body. Right. And the Holy Spirit has to have control of your spirit so you can have control of the body. So what did he say? He says, For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God. They should be my people. Wherefore, because of this truth, come out from among them, be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you and will be a father unto you. And you should be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. All right, well, that's a great truth because we know that now that we're saved, we are his son and we are his daughter. Therefore, as such, we have a guaranteed inheritance. Sure. Amen. But there's inheritance as part of his, as part of our sonship that is not guaranteed, that's earned. Right. How do I earn it? Well, I separate from the world mm -hmm. and I make sure that I am sanctified. Verse, uh, verse 1, chapter 7. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse. That's the washing part. Right. See? What is sanctification? It's being separated, yeah. set apart, and cleansed or washed. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So what do I need to do? I need to make sure that my flesh and spirit are set apart, are cleansed, are kept away from the things that would keep them down and keep me from earning an inheritance. But how do I know what to separate from? And if I get caught up in it, how do I get cleansed from the things the world has put on me this week? That I've allotted, well, look at Ephesians chapter 5. Paul says, I commend you to God and the word of his grace. Mm -hmm. Why? That you might have an inheritance among them who are sanctified. Well, what do I need? I need to be washed. So look at Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 26. Actually, we'll look at verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the, the church and gave himself for it. Why? That he might, what's that word? And what? Cleanse. Cleanse it. That's what you just read in 2 Corinthians 7. Yeah. Having therefore these promises, let's cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness uh, in the fear of God. Here he says God loved the church and gave himself for it. Why? That he might sanctify it and cleanse it. How? With the washing, With the washing of the water. What? By the word. Yeah. So how do we keep ourselves sanctified? How do we keep ourselves cleansed? By the word of God. By the word of God. That's how we do it. Spending time with the word of God. I told you about her uh, not being able to have that shower. And she's now jumping in the shower. You know what her whole life was? A trickle. 
a low pressure of religion. Now God's, you know, cranking yeah. up the pressure yeah. and she's yeah. getting washed off all that Roman Catholicism. Yeah, you know. Boy, that'll do something for you. Yeah. But there's a lot of Christians, there's a lot of Christians who are not sanctified after they are saved no. and they're okay with going to heaven, but they'll have nothing to show for it when they get there besides a glorified body. What did we all get that? Yeah, amen. But what do you have to show for afterwards? Well, I want something to show for it. All right, you got to be sanctified. All to be sanctified. Okay, you got to separate from some things. What? The world. Well, I love the world too much. That's your problem. Yeah, right. You know. The flesh. Well, that's your problem. All right, well, how do I take care of that? Well, you got to get under the water. What's the water? It's the word. Yeah, you know. So Paul says, I'm going to commend you to God. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So he commends you first to God. If you don't fear God, it ain't you don't don't even read the Bible. Yeah, right. If you don't fear God, reading the Bible is a waste of time. Yeah. Because if you fear God, when you read that Bible, you want God to tell you what to think. Amen. You want God to tell you what to believe. Amen. You want God to tell you who to separate from yep. and who to draw right. nigh to. Amen. Is that true? Yes. Yep. You don't want me telling you that because my standards may not be what God's standards are for you. Right. Is that right? Yes. You don't want me to direct your life and guide your life. You want God to do it. And so if God's going to do it, then you let God do it. Amen. But it has to come through his word. Right. Because that's how he speaks to us. Right. Amen. We don't hear visions and dreams and all that kind of stuff. That's cuckoo stuff. Yeah. He's, we have the fear of God, so we go to the word of God, and that's how God instructs us how to live our life. Amen. And when we live our life according to God and his word, what do we have? An inheritance. Amen. We have an inheritance. Look at um, Acts chapter 26. Now we're waking up. See, now we're now I can, I can see the gears starting to turn a little bit. Oh, right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Listen, this is the crux of Christianity. Yeah, right. It ain't about what do I look like on the outside. Yeah. It ain't about how many times do I do this or do I do that. It's are you doing it for God and are you doing it because the Word of God is telling you to do it. Okay. Yeah. That's what it's all about. And if you don't care about eternal things as, as it pertains to earning things when you get there, then anything you do is a waste of time. He says, always abounding in the work of the Lord as much your, as much your labor is not in vain so long as it's in the Lord. Yeah, yeah. And it's not in the Lord if it's not in the Word. Amen. 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 So we need we need the Word of God. Amen. All right, Acts 26, verse 18. Acts 26, 18. Paul says, to open their eyes and to turn them, this is repentance, to turn them, repentance means to turn, yes. and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins, salvation, right? Is that right? Yes. Amen. That they may receive what? Forgiveness of sins. All right, did you get your sins forgiven when you got saved? Yes. All right, so that's a done deal. When I got saved, I got all my sins forgiven. Yeah, I know. So that's part of my inheritance. Part of the inheritance, part of what came with your salvation, is all of your sins were forgiven. Amen. Past, present, and future. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow's sins are forgiven and under the blood. Is that right? Yes, amen. So that comes with the guarantee of my salvation. That's my guaranteed inheritance, okay. right? I'm sanctified, justified, washed by the blood of the Lamb. So all those things are true now that I'm saved. But there's a comma there. Okay. Is there a comma there? Yep. So he's not speaking of two things, one of the same, separated by an and. He's speaking of two separate things that take place in the life of the believer. He's speaking, first of all, of the salvation, yep. forgiveness of sins, comma, and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. So he's saying, we're going to go to the Gentiles so we can open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God. That's salvation. That's Colossians yes. chapter 1. He says, he says that you have been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Right. That's the guaranteed inheritance you got. Yeah, you know. So that's what he says here in verse 18. He's saying that the inheritance that came with being turned from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, to receive forgiveness of sins, that was the guaranteed inheritance. Yeah, Comma, now there's an earned inheritance. What? And an inheritance among them which are sanctified. This is what we need after salvation. 
we need to be sanctified after salvation daily and inheritance among them which are sanctified. Hmm. Now, it's interesting he says it that way because it matches what we just read in Acts chapter 20. Right. It's almost word for word, isn't it? Yeah. It's almost word for word. He's saying that there's not just a general truth of all believers being sanctified, but there's a more direct truth among them which are sanctified. In other words, if it's just the general truth of salvation, all of us are sanctified, right? Right, yeah. But that's not what he says here, is it? No. He's singling out a group of individuals that are sanctified. He's saying inheritance among them. Not among all. But he's pointing to an individual group of people that are sanctified, earning an inheritance. And he's saying, that's what we want for you. We're happy that you're saved, Gentiles. But that's not enough. Comma, there's more to be done. There's the saving part, which is great. We're glad you're going to heaven. We're all going there together. That's what all believers have together in Christ. We're all going together. We're all going to get along in heaven. Amen. The Methodists, the Presbyterians, the Calvinists, if they're saved even, I don't know. The Presbyterians, the, the, the church of this and the church of that and the non this and the pro this and the, all that. We're all going to heaven if you're saved in Christ Jesus. But there's more to salvation or there's more to the Christian life after salvation than just going to heaven. There's the growing, there's the learning, there's the application, the wisdom, the understanding, the discernment, the walking in the Spirit. All that comes after salvation. Amen. So it gives you the, hey, it's great inheritance, generally speaking, uh, forgiveness of sins, comma, but let's look past that. He says there's an inheritance among them, specifically, which are sanctified, how? By the water of the word, which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Yeah. Oh, that's a peculiar statement. Yeah, I, you know what Paul was saying? You want me to put it to you in, in layman's terms? Yes, please. In like, in like country bumpkin <laughs> terms? Yes, please. If you ain't with me, use against me. Okay. okay. What he's saying is, you're not sanctified unless you have my faith. Do you see that? Yeah. An inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. That can't be salvation alone. Right? Mm. For by grace you are saved through faith and not, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. There is a faith of salvation connected to God. Yes, God gave it to Paul to deliver to the church. But God gave Paul more than just saving faith yeah. to give to the church. Paul gave faith concerning doctrine after salvation. Is that right? Yeah. So Paul is saying here, there is a work that still needs to be done by way of what you believe concerning your faith that is only connected to what I tell you. That's why Paul says, be followers of me. Oh, yeah. As you have us as an example. Mm -hmm. He's saying the, the word that I've given to you, commit thou to faithful men who then they were going to teach others also. He's saying... Yes, there is, a sa there is a saving faith, no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. As much as there's an inheritance that comes with our salvation guarantee, no doubt about it. But there's something more for you after salvation that you need to know about. And that's all the things pertaining to our walk and sound doctrine. And you know what? That's why a lot of folks get out. Because they don't want the faith that is in, Christ, that is in Paul. They're like this. Well, I'll take God's faith. Well, that's great. You can have God's faith all day long. Yeah. But what does Paul have to say? <coughs> well, I don't follow Paul. <coughs> well, this here says you better follow Paul. Yeah, otherwise, yeah. you ain't sanctified for nothing. Yeah. Amen. And if you ain't sanctified according to the faith that is in Paul, you're not going to have the inheritance <laughs> that is among them. Who is that? That's Bible believers. That's why we're so big on doctrine here. Yeah, amen. That's why we're so big on rightly dividing. That's why we really try to take the Bible and go verse by verse and show you what's the difference between the kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven. Is there a difference at all? Why should I know it? Well, because there's a general faith of, yes, we're all going to heaven, and generally it all is the same thing, and generally 
Okay, but what's the more doctrinal truth applied here? Well, how am I going to get that? I better find out what does Paul say about the kingdom of God. Amen. That's why I'm not going to just tell you inheritance is just going to heaven and the kingdom of God is just saving. No, there's more work to be done. Can I show you one more thing that we'll yeah. go home tonight? Look at, look at 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter number 2. We'll spend a little bit more time on this business of the inheritance because it helps us to understand why is it important to, un to know what's right doctrine, what's sound doctrine. Why do I care what the Christian thinks about my walk or why does it matter how I portray myself in the eyes of other Christians? It don't matter what they think. No, it does matter what they think to some extent. If they think that the way you're carrying on is not a reflection of Christ, you might want to do an internal look of your walk with God. Yeah, amen. If people can identify you as a Christian, you might want to consider, why don't they identify me as a Christian? Yes. Right. If an individual thinks they can behave any way they want to behave in front of you and they're not going to care about it, it might be because they don't see a lot of difference between you and them. Yeah, right. That might want to be something you concerns you a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Because the Lord calls us ambassadors for Christ. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ambassadors don't get to act and behave no. and carry themselves any old way they please. No, yeah. They are expected to look a certain way, speak a certain That's way, right. conduct their behavior in a certain way that is a reflective of, reflection of the country they're representing. And what country are we representing? Not America, that's right. We're not representatives of America. We're representatives of the kingdom of God in heaven. Amen. Our king, who we are on a mission for, is Jesus Christ. Amen. So yes, on some level, it does matter what people see us yeah. do yeah. and what they hear us say and what they know about what we think concerning the Bible. Amen. Oh, you guys, are, you guys just care too much what people think. Well, on some level, it should be something we consider. Yeah. It really should be. He says, considering one another, provoking one another in love. He says, not for not for saving some of yourselves together. He says to consider one another first. Amen. Well, it shouldn't matter if they, what they think about me going to church if I'm there or not. It should matter yeah, really, yeah. because it's a reflection of Christ. Amen. When you're never there, they're concerned about where you are in relation to your walk with God. And your walk is the crux of the whole matter. So Paul is saying, you're only sanctified by faith that is in me. I believe Paul would, if we set Paul up in a local church and said, that's the example I want to follow. I think we would be blown away at the example. Yeah. I think our minds would explode. You know, we call him, he's holier than thou. Yeah. Yeah. Look at Paul, <laughs> yeah. doing everything right. And Paul would say, no, that's not it. Yeah. Yeah, amen. Paul says, I die daily. Paul says, I don't mean that it's in my flesh. Well, I got the same struggles to make this right. thing work as you do. I'm just letting you know that it is a struggle. It is a work. And it's not going to just come naturally to you. You've got to put the time in. That's right. Amen. You've got to put the time in. That's why you have to read your Bible. You have yeah. to pray. Right. You have to study your Bible. You have to listen to preaching. You got to take it in. You got to take notes. You got to hear it over and over and over again because it is what sanctifies you yeah. and separates you from those who don't. That's it. Yeah. And they're going to point to you one day and they're going to say, I'd like to know what they know about the Bible. Yeah, yeah. How come they know so much? Well, maybe it's because they are sanctified by the faith that Paul wrote about. Yeah, amen. And they have put the work in to study it out to what God thinks about things. Yes, yes, yes. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 2. And verse number um, uh, 3. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Who will have all men to be saved. That's the forgiveness of sins that Paul wrote about. Right. To turn them from darkness to life and the power of Satan to the power of God. That's that we all have that possibility, that capability of getting saved. Right? right? Yeah. And when we get saved, that's a guaranteed things that come along with that. But there's a comma here, as much as there was a comma in Acts 26, 26 18, after the word sins, forgiveness of sins, comma, and look. Mm -hmm. 
who will have all men to be saved, forget us of sins, comma, and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. It's the same thing as Acts 26, 18, because Paul wrote both these things. Yeah, amen. Paul's saying the same thing to Timothy as he said over there to the about the Gentiles in Acts 26. He's saying there's the forgiveness of sins. That is your doctrinal sanctification. That's your sonship. That's your standing. But then there is something after that that you have to work at. That you have to earn it. It's not going to come on a silver platter to you and you're going to wake up one day and know all the things that God wants you to know concerning truth. You have to put the time and the effort and the work and the study into it. And if you don't, guess what? You will not be sanctified. Now, there will be things that you will be sanctified in. Right. You might read your Bible. You might tithe. You might come to church. You might pass out tracts. But you will understand why you're doing those things. That's right. You will understand the reasons why it's important to do all the things that we're supposed to and expected to do as part of an earned reward. Why do we read our Bibles and pray and tithe and, and come to church and all those things? And us? Why? Because we want to earn something in heaven. Amen. That's true. Yeah. But there's a greater truth on why. Because it's how God works in us, works through us. It's what God desires. It's how we display a relationship with God through His Spirit in our walk. If we're just doing it to show off how spiritual we are, you're not all that sanctified. You're sanctimonious, but you're not that sanctified. But if it's for the purpose of pleasing God by walking in His Spirit and keeping close ties with God, and you love God, and you love church, and you love the Bible, and you love prayer, and you love to give, and all that stuff, guess what? You are earning something Amen. at the judgment seat of Christ far greater than just the general things that come with our salvation. And I think that's what Paul's talking about. Paul's saying, hey, I'm glad you're going to heaven, sonny. Yeah. Oh, it's a blessing you're going there. I'm yeah. going there too. Yeah. But do you want anything more out of yourself, out of your Christian life than just the knowledge of going to heaven? I don't know about you, but I do. Amen, me too. I want a little something more. I mean, I, I feel like I got ripped off in my youth because I didn't get around some of the preaching that my children are exposed to, yeah. that Hannah's exposed to, that shoot, even Abigail's exposed to, just by being over there. Uh, Mom and Rebecca and Kim know more about Bible, know more about dispensation of the body than the most fundamental Sunday school teachers. Yeah. And they're just going to give them the ethereal things, the general things, but we're trying to give you more than just that. Yeah. Amen. Rebecca and I said it, we're talking about it today. Man, it wasn't until I got under the old preacher and he began to show me that the Bible was more than just the do's and the don'ts and the general truths. Yeah. And a lot of churches want to keep you on the peripheral. Because they don't want you to realize the pastor's not really all that interested on spiritual matters and the walk with God. He's interested in building buildings and having ministries, oh. having activity, having pews in the seat. But when it comes down to what it means to have a spiritual walk with God, he don't want you to look too closely to that. <laughs> so you stay distracted by all the outside things. And we all feel good because we're doing all the outside things. But if I removed all the outside things and expose to you what it's all about, the inner things, it would scare most Christians to death how much they're not getting in church. Amen. How much they are how much they are not realizing that all those things are supposed to be done because it's what God wants you to do. It's because it's what God asks you to do, and you do it because you love God and not because it's just something Christians do right. to show off their Christian experience. Right. Oh man, it's a it, it gets yeah. oh, yeah. oh it'll the mask comes off and Folks would go, ah, put it back on, please. <laughs> <laughs> it was an next spaghetti supper, please. Quick, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I